Hey friends, Mario Cavallo here, and I'm telling you straight up front, this video is about cool, amazing, fantastic, affordable audio gear, Chinese brand audio gear. This is uh, one of the newest videos I haven't done in a long time related to my Dragon Quartz audio project. So if you're looking for geopolitics or any other topics right now, that's not where we're at. We're having fun. Guys, if you love music and toys, I got something to show you. It's going to blow your mind. This is so fun. I picked this up a couple of days ago. <clears throat> In the world of audio, I notice people are dissatisfied because these days when you buy audio gear, you buy an amplifier, it's got no tone controls on it, even good ones. Now look, here's my Cayenne A88T reference hybrid tube amplifier. I'm going to, let me remind you of how amazing and beautiful this thing is. I'm going to take the cover off carefully. Boy, those tubes are hot. And that's my... KT88 Genelex Gold Lion KT88 tubes. It's the reference quality uh, amp from Cayenne. It's got upgraded something or other Japanese transformer. And this thing is the best. It's 2200 bucks, And it doesn't have tone controls. You know? I mean, all you can do is... Turn the music up and down. Oh, by the way, this is my music. I created this music, as you might remember. I'm a, I'm a jazz musician, and years ago, I had a Korg I4S workstation, and I recorded, a, I made a bunch of tracks myself. I composed a bunch of tracks, and that's what we're listening to right now. Yeah! So, we don't have to worry about copyright. So, this is amazing. People have been complaining, no tone controls. You know, I agree. Guys, check out my setup. Okay, here's the bigger picture. Here's the bigger view of my setup, right? They're my JBL 530 stand mount speakers. Nice, huh? And, you know, they're great. Amazing, balanced, accurate sound. I'm so happy with them. But, come on, they're small. They don't put out huge amounts of bass. Now, look, I, I'm not talking about bass at high volume. I, I listen to jazz music. If you're listening to acoustic, you know, you're not looking for super high volume. But I notice at lower volume, the old story, right? We used to love our loudness button. Loudness button was so important because we could just, at low volume, boost the bass a little bit, boost the treble a little bit, give it a little sizzle, give it a little boom. Because it, get, it all kind of falls flat at low volume. That's one example of why you want tone controls. Another is when a recording is not so good. When you got a beautiful recording, you know, digital HD CD or fantastic old vintage vinyl that's been beautifully mastered in the RCA studio, <clears throat> RCA studio back in 1970, like the Oscar Peterson trio. Man, those are amazing vinyl records. They sound great. The engineers did a masterful job. But a lot of times they didn't. So you want an EQ to tweak the sound, you know? So recently, all over, the, all over YouTube, uh, uh, Steve Gutenberg with Audiophiliac and uh, several other stations have been um, reviewing the shit Loki and shit Lokius. The Loki is the four-band equalizer. Ha! Four bands. And the Loki is the six bands. Now, the thing is with these bands is that because they're only four or six bands, each one covers a very wide territory in terms of the slope on, to the left and to the right of how sharply the, that control is around that one, revolves around that one particular frequency, right? And so you really don't have a lot of control. Now, look, it's what, uh, by the way, <clears throat> my purpose is not to knock sh uh, the, the sheet, 
uh, graphic equalizers. No, they're terrific. I'm just saying that <clears throat> you don't have a lot of flexibility. Um, on the shit Loki, for example, you know, you've got a b base boost down at 20, right? They say, well, it's not, it's very wide. It's not down at 20. It's so it's very broadly increases the base, right? Say up to around 80 Hertz, maybe even a hundred Hertz. So you don't have precision again. That's terrific. They're great products. I'm not knocking them, but I was like, I want to get a graphic equalizer and I'm in China. Can't get a shit Loki or Lokius. They're only 120, 110 volt. They're back in the States. I can't get one. Uh, the, the Loki is $150. I think the Lokius, which is the six band equalizers, I think it's 250. Okay. Okay. Terrific. And I thought, I do want to get an equalizer. So thanks to the reviewers of the shit Loki and Lokius to spur me on to remember that I really do want a graphic equalizer. Nah, not a shit Loki or a Lokius. I ended up going out and getting myself a 31 band. One third octave equalizer. This thing is a monster. I'm going to shut the music off. Look at that. That, friends, is 31 bands. And let me tell you something else. It comes with presets, 10 presets. And what I discovered, so I, I'm making this video to tell you what I discovered. If you want to be able to tailor your sound, and you're back in the States or Europe, you can do the same thing that I just did. And I'll explain. You can go buy one of these if you don't mind the way they look because these are made for racks and they're made for bar and restaurant and karaoke use, club use, concert use. They go in the rack. You see this equalizer? It's very shallow and it has the rack mount there. So it's the standard rack mount. So it, they're made for commercial and studios. But that also tells you they're very high quality. They're not consumer, right? And, you, I, and, and we're going to talk about that too because you're concerned about quality, right? Because you don't want it to introduce, is it cheap? You want, you know, is it, is it cheap? Is it going to introduce noise into the system? Signal to noise ratio, all of those things. I got to tell you, man, this thing is insane. And I went out exploring and I discovered that here in China, nah, there's no, there's no consumer graphic equalizers and there aren't on Amazon, Amazon either. Now back there, you guys can pick up a similar unit to this. You can pick up a, a art brand or DBX brand or Rockville brand and a couple of others that do 31 band equalizers. And I'm going to tell you why it's a very serious, important consideration because you get precise uh, tailoring of your sound, which is amazing. And you get presets. The shit Loki and the Lokius, you got no presets. This baby's got 10 presets. Now, uh, the other thing is they only go in line wherever you put them. So let's say you're going to install this thing, right? You know, we look at the back at the wires. It's got an RC. Now, this one happens to have uh, an RCA input and output. It's got a XLR input and output. It's got headphone input, quarter inch jack input and output, and RCA input and output. Now the DBX doesn't have RCA, so you really can't buy that one. So you got to make. I think the other ones have RCA in the back. Okay, so you probably need that. All you do is put it in line. Now I but you can only put it in one line, right? So here's my, here's my vintage analog, pure analog all the way. My Nagalka MP110 cartridge on my Amari LP10 MK turntable to the preamp out to the directly out to my Cayenne amp and I'm done. Pure analog. Over here on this side, I got my digital. I bought my FX Audio M1 DAC. Guys, there's lots of really great DACs out there for around $200, $250, and this is one of them. 
This is an audio file quality Sabre DAC, $250. Very, very well reviewed. Now, nah, come on. I'm not saying it's as good as the $1,000 DAC, but you don't need it. You can barely tell the difference. So this is a Sabre DAC FX Audio M1. Excellent reviews. Here in China, everything is less expensive. I only paid a couple hundred bucks for it. So there's my DAC. My DAC inputs are Bluetooth, USB, optical, and RCA. Terrific. Then the output of the DAC goes directly to the amplifier. So here's my CD player with the optical connect on my CD player right down there. This is my CD player connected by optical to the back of my DAC. And then my DAC goes out to the back of the amplifier. So that's, that's separate. That's my digital side, okay? I unplug the RCA into the auxiliary of the amp, plugged it into the RCA input on the back of the equalizer, and then had another set of RCA connectors on the RCA output to the amplifier. So I just put it in line between my DAC and my amplifier. Doesn't matter what amplifier you got, it's just that one source, you can't switch. There's, there's, there's only one set of jacks in the back. It's very simple, very straightforward. So now, anything that I listen to through my DAC, which would be Bluetooth, USB, my CD player, is I can equalize. Terrific. If I want to mess around with my vinyl, I'm going to have to change the jacks. That's okay. But that's not my main intention of why I bought it. What I want you to understand, and we're going to, I'm going to keep this thing, bring it in close and show you. These bands, uh, when I get too close, let me see if we can try and get, yeah. Excuse my camera, but you got 20, 25, 31.5, 40, 50, 63, 80, 100, 125, 150, 200, 250, 315, 400, 500, 630, 800, 1K, 1.25K, 1.6K, 2K, 2.5K, 3.1K, 4K, 5K, 6.3K, 8K, 10K, 12.5K, 16K, and 20K. That is insane. That is insane. And you got 10 presets. How does this thing work? It's easy. It's digital. It's not analog. Okay, so how does this thing work? Piece of cake, man. Let me show you real quick. I'm going to wrap this up. You push the button. And... Oh, hang on. Right. You push the button. And right now I have it over here. You see, you can select it. So you push the button. You select which band. You can see it moving. See that? You select which band. So here's my 40 cycle. 50, 40 hertz, 50 hertz, and 63 hertz. Separate, tight, precise. 40 hertz, 50 hertz, and 63 hertz. Right there. So I got it on 40 hertz right now. Okay? And then I can just use the other knob and adjust it up. Adjust it down. And you can see right there, it goes in half dB increments, up and down, up all the way up to 14. So I think it's up and down 7 dB. I think. I, I Don't quote me. I think that's what it is. The manual does not give a lot of detail, and it's in Chinese. All right? So that's it. You adjust it. Now, I've got it boosted a little bit at 40 and I've got it boosted at 50, and then a little bit at 63. I got it boosted about five, five settings at 50 and about three at 63. The point I want you to know, I want you to understand. 
We're going to come over here and talk about this. We're going to talk about my JBL 530. This is a five and a quarter. Look, it's a big cabinet. And it's an incredibly well-made speaker. People who review these know how good they sound. But look, folks, it's a stand mount, five and a quarter inch two-way. I listen to it, and it sounds great. But at medium volume, I just wish it had more bass. And you don't want to use a single tone control that boosts too wide a range of bass. That's the problem with the shit Loki and the shit uh, Lokius. They boost the bass, but it's a, w a very wide range of bass. And that puts more strain on a smaller woofer. I don't want a subwoofer, guys. I just, at medium volume and low volume, I want to hear lower bass. I want a, to have that little more guts to it. Okay. And, oh, I forgot. I can play music. That's what I want. Okay. And... If you boost the bass on a wide tone control, it's just too much. It's too much. And I don't want to do that. So look at how precisely the JBL 530, I know that woofer design up to medium loud volume levels goes down that woofer design in terms of the frequency response goes down into the low 40s. It does. It's got satisfying bass down into the low 40s, but no lower than that. And so at medium volume, if you boost tightly 63 or 50 or 40, even down to 40, I've, I've I played with 31.5 and there's absolutely no response because the woofer just doesn't go down that low. 40 is deep and I can hear the difference and that proves that the woofer goes down to 40 but it rolls off sharply after that because at 31.5 there's nothing there. 40 is very precise because these are tight bands. These are 130 EQ bands. So the roll off on the left and the roll off on the right and the roll off on the left of each band is very tight. So you can precisely adjust the sound. That's really important because I want to be able to boost 40 or 50 or 60 and not boost at all too much, too broadly. I can be very precise and that saves the also saves the woofers and saves the amplifier from being too strained. Come on, it's a five and a quarter inch speaker. I want more nice space out of it. I, when I have done this and I played with it yesterday, I boost 40 and 50, a few, three, four, five, six dB at medium volume. And I'm like, wow, it adds some guts to it. It's without sounding boomy at all. So a wider tone control is gonna also boost up to around 80, even a hundred Hertz. You get too much bass. I don't want it. I want my precise, deep, low bass only at revolving around that 40 hertz or 50 hertz, tops 60 hertz. I do not want to boost 80, 80 hertz at all. And this makes my speakers sound amazing. Same is true for the high end. I've got uh, a, only a 1 dB boost at 10K. And a 1 dB boost at, uh, no, no boost at 10K. I got a couple of dB boost at 12.5K and a couple of dB boost at 16K. And that's it. And they're tight, tight, precise boosts. Also, this is the game control. It's literally a game control. This one right here is a game control. And it comes, it comes defaulted to 64. In combination with my DAC, I've got it set at 80. There's my set. Check it out. Save. Preset number one, saved. Unbelievable. Saved. Preset number one, save. Preset number two, I have it different. I'm not going to change it right now. There's preset number two. So it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten presets. 
you can pen different sound profiles that you can tailor. Oh, by the way, I'm sorry. If you look what I have here for, let me see here. I want to do uh, recall. Yep, preset one. Good. So now I'm on preset one. And here's my preset one. I forgot to tell you. See, I have it boosted here. I have it cut here. So I, I'm sorry, guys. Let me show you this one more time. I got it boosted in the base at 50. And right there, you'll see I created a little V-shape. I dipped it at 1.62, 2.3, and 3.5. So in the upper mids, I pulled it back a little bit, give it that little bit of a V sound, you know, V-shape sound, just a little bit. And boosted those highs just a little bit. Guys, that's it. That's the story. How much? $135. $135. That's crazy, right? So, you know, you're, you know, you're asking me, you know, what about the quality? But, guys, this is made for commercial, for commercial quality. I can't tell you what. I didn't look at the inside of it yet. I can judge. I was very concerned. Look, I got a really pure DAC into my Cayenne. That's an amazing amplifier. I know how my turntable sounds into my amplifier. Superb, especially with my Nagalka MP110 cartridge. Okay, so I know how to judge if there's a, a problem with the sound. And we all know, for example, I have my old Denon AV40, AVR4308 receiver. There it is right there. And it has a pure direct mode. And then it has a stereo mode right and surround mode so you know we always we're always using pure direct bypass the tone controls right we want the pure sound so the last point of this video was there could i hear any difference when i put this unit in the line and that was my concern and even if i could hear any difference i wouldn't care because it's probably small anyway zero before I put this equalizer, zero difference. Before I put this equalizer in the line, I turn the gain of my DAC all the way up. I turn the gain of my Cayenne all the way up, just like that. And you can hear. That's a low level uh, signal to noise ratio. And that's with all the gains fully cranked up okay what i'm saying is the sound that you just heard was the exact same when the equalizer was not in the line i had just the dac just the amplifier i cranked the gain up on both and i could hear a low some low level noise out of the tweeter of the speakers then i put in the equalizer in the line I didn't use expensive cables. I use good cables, but they're not super expensive cables, my RCA cables. They're not cheap ones. They're good ones, but they're not like 50 bucks, 100 bucks. And there was no added sound whatsoever. None. Zero. Okay. The next thing was the sound of music itself. Does it, is it coloring in any way? Absolutely zero. I listened. I, I know my music really well. We all know our systems really well, don't we? I know my music. I know my sound. I know my sound stage. I know how it sounds very precisely. The depth, where the music is. I'm very familiar with certain songs. And I played the music. I stood here. I listened to my Oscar Peterson trio, right? Lots of space, distinct sounds. And I listened to it carefully. And then I unplugged the DAC, plugged it into the back of the equalizer, plugged the equalizer into the system, put it in the line. EQ bypass, by the way, it has an EQ bypass uh, switch. Bypass the EQ, no, no EQ, but the EQ in the line. And I listened to it again. And I'm telling you, I could hear absolutely no, nothing told me that a piece of equipment was inserted in the line. Now, on a spectrometer... I suppose there has to be something there, but it, it, there's nothing audible at all that changes, colors the sound at all coming out of that EQ. It's totally neutral and transparent. People who bought the shit Loki and Lokius reported the same thing. You know, guys, 
I guess it's just technology these days because these are digital EQs. They're not analog. This is a digital EQ. It doesn't have sliders. And also in the literature, it says it's DSP. It uses DSP, you know, and, uh, you know, Zeos over at Z Reviews always talks about how amazing, you know, Edifier and High Vice Swan's speakers are. There's my, there's my R2000 DBs for my Yamaha electric piano. And they are, they're amazing. You know, they use DSP to make the sound perfect, constantly correcting the sound. It's absolutely amazing. I don't know who, what's going on with this equalizer. Just that supposedly it has DSP, whatever that means. I'm telling you, it did nothing at all in terms of adding something to the sound other than the amazing precise equalization with 10 presets, uh, an EQ bypass. I can compare, I can switch on the fly, and I've been enjoying it so much uh, at low and medium volume levels. And then when I turn it up louder, I've got it to where you just bypass it or I, I have a preset where I put less bass boost um, when I turn it up louder. She don't want to strain the woofers. What a great find. What an amazing thing, guys. Get yourself tone controls. Go out, get yourself a shit Loki or a Lokius or do even better. Just, it's, you know, Amazon or you go to Sweetwater Music or, or Fry's Electronics, whatever it is. Go and get yourself a commercial 31 band, one third octave digital equalizer. Amazing, precise tweaking. It, it preserves your woofers. It gets you the exact sound that you want. You can tweak like crazy. It doesn't put, it puts less of a strain on your system. Quality now is through the roof because of, you know, just advances in technology, as we all know in the digital world, digital amplifiers, digital this and that. And I'm not a tech guy. Um, and like I said, it's got presets, 10 presets, so convenient. And only $130 is what I paid for this one. And it's amazing. I think um, the ones on Amazon uh, are like 250 200 250 or something like that so that's it guys i had so much fun discovering i what a toy and that's what this video is about what a toy this one is a ubs apx 58 professional audio products digital graphic equalizer fantastic that's it i'm done happy to share this with you uh, Hong Tua, thanks for joining me. I, I didn't advertise this at all, promote that I was going to do this. Having fun talking about Chinese audio brand products. I love my Cayenne KT88 reference amp. Well, what's not to love? It's a lot of money. I love my Amari turntable. I love my, no my knob sound. This is the knob sound CD3. This is not a cheap, you're thinking it's cheap. It's not, this is 2,700 RMB. This is for a $420 CD player. And it sounds superb. Uh, it's meant to be in, in the sound category of a Moran CD5 or something like that. And I love my Bada power, uh, power uh, strip and power conditioner. And now I have this amazing one-third band octave. 31 band equalizer with presets that's it guys have a fantastic time dragon quartz audio uh, chinese brand audio products and all just amazing what's happening in the world for us we want to have great sound and, and uh, on a budget and that's it i'm done hey please sub uh, subscribe to my substack newsletter uh counterpoint china on substack and, of course, subscribe to me here at YouTube and follow me on Twitter. And uh, that's it. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.